Welcome to C-Suite on Your Street, a show where we talk about what you need to know to start, run, and grow your small business. I'm LaTanya Howard, your host and a fellow small business owner of Howard Corporate Center right here in the city of Laurel. On this program, we'll speak with entrepreneurs and experts on a wide range of business topics. Our goal, to share resources, tips, and tricks to help you operate and think like a CEO, wherever you are on your entrepreneurial journey. Our first guest today is Robert Gatewood, president of Gatewood Marketing, a full service advertising and marketing agency. Mr. Gatewood will share the basics of effective marketing and how it can help your business to develop and succeed. I've been in marketing really most of my life. Even when I was a kid, I worked in my dad's grocery store, so I had a, an early introduction to business and marketing. But I, and, uh, I've spent several years in uh, corporate America doing marketing for several companies, and then I realized during that period what a difference was between what corporations were doing and small companies were doing. These guys have entire divisions and people and vice presidents committed to marketing. Mm -hmm. And so when I looked at what was happening, I said, wow, small companies really don't stand a chance mm -hmm. against these uh, big corporations. So when I left corporate America, I decided to commit myself to helping small businesses grow through marketing. Okay. And in your experience, you know, given that small businesses are your niche, because if, I, if I'm not mistaken, you, you have a, a national clientele, that's, correct? That's right. That's right. And, and you work with businesses of all sizes. But your niche is small businesses. What is it specifically, besides the disparity uh, that you just mentioned, that motivates you to work with small businesses in particular? What is the need? And with any business, you have to identify your niche. So that's a lesson that I'm sharing with others, but I also have to practice it myself. So I've chosen the niche of small companies. One, because I was a small company myself most of my life. Mm -hmm. And I understand the needs and wants, which is one of the fundamentals of marketing. Identifying a need and a want, which is marketing 101. And so when I can speak to small businesses if it, with a voice in which I'm familiar, it makes my job easier and it makes it more effective for my audience. Small businesses have unique needs. Because when I was doing corporate America, they, had, uh, they were bigger, they had more different needs than the small companies. Mm -hmm. But all of those resources that big corporations were using were not necessary for small companies. So what I did, I stripped away all the fluff and the fat and said, look, these are the specific needs of small companies. Now, there are some basics that apply no matter what size your company is. Mm -hmm. And that's where I have taken this uh, approach to small companies. Make sure you understand the basics. Right. Okay. That's good information to have. And now that you, you gave us a good segue into the marketing basics, um, because there are a few paradigms that you are going to share with us to help the viewers understand marketing, because it really is a big animal. But let's start with the marketing basics. What exactly is marketing in basic terms? Well, the best way to understand marketing is that you have to be better than your competition than identifying and satisfying the needs and wants of target audiences. Mm -hmm. And target is the operative word. Most companies fail because they don't invest in marketing or advertising. And when you think about it, if I didn't understand something and I was afraid I wasn't going to get a return on my investment, I wouldn't do that either. So that's what marketing prepares you to do, because when you understand who your audience is and you target properly, your advertising will actually work. So we have to start with the umbrella of marketing where we understand the audience and target those resources to that right audience. And then the other things tend to fall into place. Okay, so with that in mind, is it fair to say that marketing is when you're simply just trying to identify who your client is or who your target audience is? Is that it or is it more than that? Well, it, I don't want to dismiss marketing as this ideative exercise that has no measurable outcome mm -hmm. because marketing is actually a science. It's not a science like math, but it's a soft science, a combination of, um, of art and science. And then we have to look at it as what are the different components how can we get marketing to help the other factors of marketing work, uh -huh. which are advertising, benefit selling, and customer service. Uh -huh. But we have to start from a foundation of marketing, of targeting that audience through demographics, through geographics, through psychographics. Well, well, why don't we help our viewers understand those three terms a okay. little bit? And, I'm, and I hope you remember what you just said. Because <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you said the demographics. Right. What, Tell us in simple terms, what, what do you mean when you say that? Well, let's look at it this way. The needs of an 18-year-old is substantially different from the needs of an 80-year-old. So mm -hmm. when we're marketing, who is our audience? Is it an 18-year-old? Is it a uh, 25 to 54? Those are the demographics, age, gender, income, okay. race. Those are the demographics. So when we think about marketing, if you're a business owner out there saying to yourself, who is my audience? You have to start building this customer profile, mm -hmm. and you start with demographics. Right. What are their ages? What are their income? Are they married or are they single? That's the first one. The second one is the geographics. Where are they located? Mm -hmm. I've had many clients that say, look, I want to advertise on this big radio station, 
but they, they're working in a hair salon that only reaches about a five mile radius. So a big mistake among many advertisers is that they're spending advertising resources to a market that, that's never gonna come to their shop. So if I'm a small company and I'm trying to uh, geographic target, I wanna make sure I'm reaching that, 20, that five mile radius, which may not be mass media. It may be direct mail or some other way. Right. And then psychographic, that's more about the lifestyle. How do this person uh, view life? What are their beliefs, their cultures, and so forth? That information is a little harder to get, but once you get those three together, the demographics, the geographics, and the lifestyle, the psychographics, you build a profile where you can walk into a room almost and just say, look, that is my customer. You mentioned advertising, and I know I, when I was very early in my business, I would confuse or at least think that marketing and advertising were synonymous. Right. But in fact, they're not. And I think the first paradigm that you're going to share with us, the ABCs of marketing, will help the viewers to understand what the distinction is between marketing, advertising, and some other subcomponents, if you will, of marketing. So why don't you walk us through those ABCs of marketing? Okay, well, let's start, go back to marketing for a minute. So okay. we've identified our audience. Mm -hmm. It's okay, look, we, we understand it. there's a certain demographic, a certain geographic, and a certain lifestyle. Now we have to d deliver that message that we formulated during our marketing stage to that audience. And that's where advertising comes in. We have overcomplicated advertising. Really, advertising is just about delivering impressions. It's delivering your message. Mm -hmm. If you do your marketing right, you would deliver that message to the right audience. There's two basic types of advertising. There's the uh, direct action advertising, where somebody just say, look, I have this item. There's a strong call to action. Come get it. Mm -hmm. And then there's the indirect. That's the more subtle types of advertising. You may be talking about a PR campaign, a newsletter, or social media, where there's there's, a, there's a, a less of a call to action, but it's more of a nurturing process uh -huh. of building the relationship. So you have to do a little bit of both, have to do some of both of those to have an effective advertising campaign. Uh, so that's advertising. So that's the A of the ABC. That's the that A of the ABC. Okay, right. very good. And then the B is the benefit selling. If you're selling, you start in your marketing phase, you go to advertising, now you have to sell that person. Now everybody who you advertise to that may call your shop is not necessarily ready to buy at that particular moment. Mm -hmm. So we have to go through a sales process, and that's understanding uh, the benefits of the product. We have to sell the benefits, not the features. There's a big difference. The benefit is what does this product do for me? What problem does it solve? And then the, uh, the second part of uh, selling is handling objections. Once that person says, look, okay, the price is too high, can you have a response to say, okay, we have another price that maybe doesn't have as many features, but we can still solve that need. And then the last one is closing, asking for the sale. Okay. So you have to do the benefit selling, we have to do the overcoming objections, and closing, which is asking for the sale. And then the last one is C, is customer service. Okay. Customer service, it goes back to those metrics of marketing. We have to understand there's actually a science to marketing. And one of those things is the cost per acquisition. Every customer has a cost. Mm -hmm. That means you spend the amount of money divided by the number of customers you get, you have a CPA called the cost per acquisition. Customer service answers another acronym, which is LTV, lifetime value. Mm -hmm. How long is that customer gonna be with you and how much money am I gonna get from this customer over the lifetime of this customer? We extend the lifetime value with good customer service. If you are just uh, going after one-off sales, you will not succeed as a business. Part of your business model should be based on getting return customers and referrals. The secret sauce of marketing is understanding uh, who your customer is, and another one is building those relationships that are necessary to get customers. i am be back on advertising for a minute. Most people spend all of their time on customer acquisition, but there are other stakeholders that are very important in the su success of a business. Those are your suppliers, your distributors, your mm -hmm. contractors, your employees, uh, the community, uh, government agencies. You have to bring those people into the fold as well to make all of these parts work. Right. One of the problems, uh, Latonya, is that, that companies don't advertise, and I can't overstate this, mm -hmm. they are afraid it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. And because of that, they don't advertise. That's not an excuse, you have to advertise. You have to just make it work. Right, right. And to that, to that point, you know, another aha moment, if you will, that I had when you and I talked before is that marketing really begins before you launch your business. One of many mistakes that I and, and I would imagine most business owners make in their business because b being a business owner is about really a series of mistakes until you <laughs> realize success. But, you know, I had the impression that you begin marketing after you actually launch your business. But 
the smarter business approach is to begin marketing before you launch your business. It's really a, a way of doing some due diligence. Like you said, identifying who your client profile is, what their needs and wants are, so that you, when you launch, you are effectively advertising and communicating your message to the right profile. And you're right, and one of the tra tragedies with small companies is that they don't have the resources to sometimes respond from a substantial loss right. in bad advertising. So right. sometimes bad advertising can literally put them out of business. That's why it's important to invest in marketing up front. Uh -huh. Marketing is an investment, and the more you spend, the more you stand to gain or lose. So the companies that invest in marketing tend to be the ones that are left standing. Uh, but one of the things that you uh, mentioned to me recently is that your marketing and your advertising strategy really needs to change or rather should align with where you are in your business cycle. That's exactly right. Um, you know, again, a, a, a thought that I had when I first started business was that, okay, whatever worked for me in the beginning <laughs> should still be working for me now five or six years later, right. and that may or may not be the case. So I, I want you to share with the viewers more about the aligning of your marketing slash advertising strategies with the life cycle that your business is in, and you can tell us about that along the lines of the different phases of the life cycle. Okay, let's look at it from the perspective of an industry or a product. Okay. Uh, most products, most people when they start a company, if you're starting from scratch uh, and you're in the industry where there's a lot of research going on, you're trying to figure out what the product is, how it works, how you're going to launch this business, when you're going to do it, there's a research phase that's actually taking place at the beginning of a business or to be a business cycle. Mm -hmm. If you're doing that, just realize there's not going to be much money made. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't set money aside for that, then you're probably shorting yourself. I mean, you can st still be very successful, but I think companies that are going to be successful in the long run spend uh, some time and effort in that research and development phase. Okay. Then we get into the introduction phase. Once again, there's not a lot of revenue being generated at this time because people don't understand how it works. Uh -huh. They're saying, wow, what is this thing called the telephone at some point? We understand uh -huh. what a telephone is uh -huh. now, but there uh -huh. was a time when people, they were used to using uh, different ways of communicating. Uh, so that you have to go to this period where people have to be introduced to the product, this educational phase, oh. because the industry is really what's gonna dictate the demand for the product. So if you're in the introduction phase, the demand is low, but you still have to alert people that the, you have to almost create the demand because it's a good idea, it's a good product, but people just don't know how it works or uh -huh. if they even need it. Uh -huh. So that's the introduction phase. Then if you hang around long enough, you play your cards right, you're gonna slide into the growth phase. And uh -huh. growth phase, is, that's where you like to be. Okay. The challenge with the growth phase, Latonya, is that people get comfortable. That's when things are really doing well. Things are taking off. I mean, you got money coming in that you hadn't planned on. People just really, sometimes they, they overreact. They go out and start buying bigger offices and, you know, buying cars for all employees and getting the wall signs put up. Right. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that if you understand that this is a temporary phase. Uh -huh. All of these phases, none of these are permanent. If you understand that this is a temporary phase and you govern yourself accordingly, this could be the best part of your business. Because during this phase, you're starting to also look over the hill at, what, at what's coming. Mm -hmm. Because right behind that is the maturity phase. Now, maturity phase, that's when people starting to notice a little different. They had this, ex this explosive growth when mm -hmm. they've gone out and bought three or four cars. Their dogs have a pool now. They have flat screens in every room of the house in the office. Right. And now sales are leveled off. Right. And they're like, wait a minute, we're doing the same thing we did last exactly. year at this time, but we're not getting the same return. Mm -hmm. Well, it wasn't anything that the company did, it was something that happened in the industry. Mm -hmm. Because in the maturity phase, competition is fierce. Mm -hmm. In that growth phase, you may have been of one of two or three. In the maturity phase, you could be one of many dozens. Right. And that will actually start to manifest itself in your numbers. You start to see this drop off. You start to see uh, the big stores get in. All of a sudden, the Walmarts and the Amazon. Right. And so that's the maturity phase. And then at the maturity phase, there's actually a decline. Mm -hmm. the maturity phase can sit there for a while where you're actually really battling it out. But during the decline phase, the demand for that service and products actually trickles off. Okay. So you. So just imagine if you're a company that's doing the same approach to advertising from the growth phase into mm -hmm. the decline phase. Mm -hmm. During the growth phase, your advertising strategy is really directional. It just tell me, all the customers need to know is how to get to it. You have the best, um, it's easy to find, and it's easy to pay for. In that um, maturity phase, you need to start separating yourself from the competition. Mm -hmm. okay. so look, I got a good, I got a good mouth trap. Mine may catch three mice at a time, but the other guy only catches one. Right. So you got to start differentiating yourself from the competition. In the decline phase, by this time, the most of the money has actually left that industry. And if mm -hmm. you're going to stick around, 
this is where people usually have multiple streams of income or right. multiple businesses going. The this differentiation is, begins to come more important, I guess. That's exactly right. Yeah. Because you can't, there's really, the, the market is so saturated now and the demand has dropped off because people have moved on to something else. Mm -hmm. They have actually decided this product has run its course. Now, the, you can't be too hasty and jump out because sometimes there's a resurgence. Because during this decline phase, what many companies have done, they've reintroduced the product with different purposes. They may rebrand it. They may mm -hmm. decide to uh, make it, uh, attach it to something else. So some companies have been very successful in this, in this decline phase. Mm -hmm. So what's important for the business owner is to understand where you are. Right. Right. Let's, let's use a, a medical parallel. I mean, it's, a, it's an impractical physician to only discover that there's a, what, the, what the ventricle and the atrium of the heart is upon opening the, the client's chest. Mm -hmm. You need to know that before you get in there. You can't just say, look, I'm, I'm opening this person's chest. Wow, there's an atrium, there's a ventricle. Wow, I didn't see that coming. The same thing when it comes to businesses. There is an introduction, a growth, a maturity, and decline. Don't just wait until you end the growth phase or the decline phase. Of, wow, I didn't see that coming. That's, that's very helpful information. You know, you told us about how marketing and advertising needs to differ in the growth and maturity phase. And the introduction phase, which you said is the phase where people really just need to be educated about the product. They might have some resistance to it because it's new and they don't know necessarily if it's something that's going to fit their needs and wants. So how would a company market or advertise in the introduction phase? We talked about those two types of advertising. We talked about direct action mm -hmm. and the indirect action, which is communication. Okay. You're doing PR, you're doing sending out newsletters, you're holding workshops, you're doing seminars, you are educating people. You are nurturing them okay. so when the growth phase hit, you have already cultivated them into potential customers. So you're not doing as much direct action advertising. Mm -hmm. When you get into that the growth phase, you can put the PR aside for a minute. You say, look, okay. come get it. Gotcha. I have it. I stack them high and I sell them cheap. Come get it. Right. So it's a different approach for each one of these phases. Right. Okay. And you mentioned that even when a business or, or when a business or an industry reaches the decline phase, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going out of business or that your business is a failure necessarily. It's just the normal cycle of industries and businesses. Right, and sometimes uh, a business will actually have a resurgence. Mm -hmm. I can use the uh, recent uh, real estate industry. We had a bust back in uh, about 2008, 2009, where, I mean, real estate agents were out. They were working at McDonald's. They were cutting grass because their industry had really fallen flat. Right. But guess what happened? The ones that hung in there now are today's millionaires because mm -hmm. they hung around, they found other ways, they repurposed their skills. They were doing short sales, they were doing seminars, they were doing workshops, they were becoming consultants. Mm -hmm. So the people that hung around in that decline of the, of the real estate industry are the ones that are doing very well right now. Right, and the key, like you mentioned, is the differentiation. That's when that becomes more key That's for right. survival. That's exactly right. right. Absolutely great. So one of the, the three steps that you and I talked about before was the importance of narrowing your niche. Right. So tell us, you know, very briefly, you know, how that can be an action item that viewers can take today. Just sit, you can do some research. Uh, just some people can do it intuitively. They've, you've been working in this industry for, certain, for so long, you can just automatically know who your clients are or your target audience is. So just narrow away all the people that are not your customers. Now sometimes that might sound a little harsh to some people, but some people are really never gonna be a customer. You're wasting time and money trying to make Absolutely. them your customer. Right. So my, my, my advice would be to identify who is the most uh, likely person to buy your service and focus on that audience. In most companies, particularly small companies, their, their, their focus is too broad. Right. So narrow that audience and you might say, look, I'm focusing on women. I may be focusing on women that are, uh, they go to church every Sunday, women a certain age, mm -hmm. women living on a certain street. So you can narrow that and all of a sudden you are speaking their language by saying, this is my audience. Okay, great. So another action item will be to match services to your ideal clients' wants and needs. That's exactly right. Because once you, once you have identified who your audience is, you may you may realize that you have a lot of dead weight in your inventory. Mm -hmm. Items you have some SKUs that are never going to move. Mm -hmm. You need to get rid of them mm -hmm. because now you have a more narrow focus. Some items that you're carrying inventory, something that you're wasting money, services that you're offering. Right. You have staff sitting around offering services that no longer now align with your audience. Right. Because you're gonna be more efficient, you're gonna have more uh, time to do things, time to do it better, because now you've narrowed your focus and now simultaneously you're narrowing the products that you're gonna be offering because now you have a, a, a sharper focus. Okay, and then the third one is to implement an advertising or delivery system to reach your ideal client where they are. 
that's, that's so true because you have, you don't just pick a radio station because that's the one you like, okay? <laughs> you say, look, wow, I like Tom right. Jones on the morning show. Right. Look, maybe your audience is not that audience. Mm -hmm. You have to pick an uh, advertising mechanism that are in line with your audience and the target you're trying to reach and that product you're trying to sell. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that you advertising, and this is something else I, God, I have to say this because people are so afraid to pull the trigger on that advertising because they're afraid it's not going to work. If you target properly and you advertising on the right station, whether it's, it doesn't have to be radio, it could be social media, it could be through some type of web campaign, it could be print ad, it could be direct mm -hmm. mail, wherever your audience is, you can now advertise with an assurance. You can be bold, and that's, what, that's what's separating the big companies from the small companies. They're afraid to advertise. Right. And right. it's killing them. It is scary as a small business owner because all we see is the dollar sign that's rather right. than the return that we'll get on those dollars. That's exactly right. Yes. And that that's, that's really has been a sort of Damocles for these small companies. Right, right. And you actually have a bonus action items, uh, action item, exceed expectations all the time. Wow, if I, could, uh, if I could just crystallize this, if I could just hang it up on people's around their necks, brand it on their forehead, <laughs> that's going to separate you from, from, the, uh, from, the, from the rest. Most companies are not going to exceed expectations. Mm -hmm. I can, without doubt, say that's been the success for my company. People okay. are shocked. Okay. Some of the things I do. They say, I did not expect you to do that. I'm so used to the company saying, look, I've got your money. Sometimes they disappear or they do marginal mm -hmm. follow-up. You need to do something that's going to shock them because go back to those marketing metrics. We talked about marketing being a science, it's mm -hmm. a soft science. Cost per acquisition, lifetime value. When you exceed expectations, one, that customer is going to be around forever. I can spend less money now on advertising because I have brand ambassadors out here working for me right. in the name of my clients. Right. That's what exceeding expectation does. It brings down those cost uh, numbers that you're spending on advertising because now you have others out there doing it for you. Right, right. Well, this has been some very helpful information. I thank you so much for sharing it with us. Do you have any closing remarks before we, we wrap up for well, our I would, viewers? I would just say understand that marketing is not something for the, for the weak of heart, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you might just get some help. I'm not just promoting myself, but there are people out here that spend their whole lives doing this. Right. Just because you're a good cupcake maker or a good roofer or a good attorney doesn't mean that you're going to be an expert marketer. So I would say do not be afraid to ask for help. Excellent. Excellent advice. Well, Mr. Gatewood, thank you so much for joining us today. And you. don't you go anywhere. We have another guest coming right up.